Hey folks, this is Noble Rambler, and welcome back to Ostrov. I'm over here in the trees so you can hear the birds. Because over here, you can't. Anyway, this episode we are going to unravel all of the mysteries of Ostrov, or something like that. Actually, I've already recorded this one once. Last time ended kind of waiting for something to happen over here. And I had pre-recorded episodes 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 with the idea that the updates were coming out quite fast. For this game and I was worried that there might be one one of these days that actually breaks the save and I really hate leaving a series unfinished. I like to come to some kind of a of a conclusion before we start over from scratch again. So I wanted to get a few of them recorded ahead of time in case that event happened. Turns out it didn't. And in the meantime, I've had a lot of folks writing in with their take on how to solve some of the problems that we've seen here. Um, some of them may be guesses, some of them have probably actually seen the solutions or tried them themselves and discovered them. And either way, I decided to scrap episode 7 and re-record so that we don't go yet one more day still answering the same questions that have already been answered. So let's dive into this. Jim left quite a few different uh, uh, answers for me. So first of all, having a manager at a farm. So let's head over to the farm right over here. So having a manager, which will happen soon. There we go. And you are Ola's. And he also suggested having, he? Well, someone suggested. I didn't uh, write that down. Having a female manager, because she can do the job just, I keep clicking the wrong one, just as good. But that frees up a guy to do menial labor somewhere. And since the game seems to, there we go wants to uh, uh, only allow guys to do certain things and, and ladies to do certain things, then that's an advantage to us. But in this sense, it allows us with when she's employed, we can now pre-plan several years worth of stuff. Oh, fallow, I see. Is there a way to... Ah, and we can reset what it is. Okay, so we can set several years worth ahead of time. That's interesting. Which field is this? One. That is fallow. So I'll just uh, leave it there for the moment. Okay. And pull that back out. All right. Well, that's good to know. Um, what else here? More control of the crops. Yeah. Plowing a field gives longer nutrient boost. So we're going to leave it fallow for a while, and it's going to gradually build nutrients back up. But he says that when you plow it, it gives it a. It, the nutrients seem to last longer in the soil. So that's an observation you made there. A couple more here. Um, suggested that if we have less things in the queue, then they will concentrate and actually do something. When we get too many things in, they, uh, they won't. Though when we first started the game, we had eight houses, a forester, a smithy, and a thatch, and eventually a couple of... Uh, of uh, fishing oriented buildings and this was pretty stacked up and they were doing just fine then so I don't know if it is the quantity as much as the game has built up and there's more going on and for some reason it's just not keeping up with the labor part of it so I think it's a combination of several things going on there but this episode I want to try pausing everything except for what we want and see if we can not not only get a couple of houses built but get a cow shed built <laughs> I want to see how that works um, green eyes brought up something, Green Eyes 212, that uh, I had missed over and over again because I've always noticed the, let's see, oh, that's going to be difficult to get to, huh? How do I get to, okay, pull out of you, right there. I can't hit the, I can't hit it. Aha. Uh -huh. So, Granary, you're going to go there, but let's get rid of you. I need to get into that hitbox there, and they're not willing to, to talk to each other. Let's get rid of the town hall as well. There we go. There is a little issue that's got to be worked out. Get too much stacked up in here. One, two, three, four, we got nine there. Nine things. We get to number ten. Okay, so ten. I, I've never had that many in the queue before, because I've always had access to these. So maybe there is a number of in the queue that, that finally overwhelms 
the code somehow. Don't know. Um, but anyway, over in here? Yeah. I had always looked right here. I can see we're bringing in 217 and we're spending 237. Obviously, we have a balance of negative 20. I never noticed this over here, the treasury. So we did have funds to go and send out that that messenger to blah, 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 town over there. We had quite a few funds. Now, we need to get control of this thing before that ever hits zero. I wonder if that's a game ender right there when you when you go bankrupt. So this is year to year, but there actually is a sense that we had, I don't know what it started out with, maybe a thousand in the treasury to begin with. So that's something I have not tracked from the beginning. Be curious to when we do restart to see what that actually uh, begins at, and you know eventually maybe there'll be more of a longer spreadsheet so you can see you know a graph from the very beginning of of your your loss and then eventually leveled and then your your profits start to build up over the decades. So great tip there. Daniel wrote in mentioned that uh, the demolish button now works. Now, don't know what I was referring to in the episode that he brought that up. I know there was one time I wanted to get rid of the boatyard, and it still won't let me do that. But as you saw, we were able to demolish some of these that were queued up. And there was there was one or two of these that I had queued up and changed my mind and went to demolish it, and I couldn't. And I said, well, I guess it's going to stay there. But the boatyard is not one of them. It is still undemolishable. So some of them work, some of them don't. And then John wrote in, suggested to use summer and winter for building, the off-season for the farms. So the idea being that we do need to keep all of these workers employed as much as possible because they've got to bring in an income because they've got to buy food. Otherwise, they will go broke. We could have all kinds of food on the map, and they'll still have to move out and leave because there's no food left for them because there's no money left for them. So you got to think of this as a as an economy. More of a I want to say capitalism as compared to communism. I, I use that very simplistically. I was talking or writing to Vape about this, but banished had everything communal. All the food came in and went to storage houses. They came and got what they needed to. This is different. These guys are responsible for their own budget. They bring in an income they use that income to buy what they need, and they stock their home. There is no communal storage of all of the supplies everybody uses in the sense that we're used to in Banish. This one, they're individual little house budgets, in a sense, and that only works when they are employed. So we've got to keep them employed, yet we've got to do it in a way that is balanced so that we've got workers when we need them. So the summer workers doing the, well, actually the, the spring workers planting and the fall workers harvesting, that's their sense of employment. And when they're not doing that, they're off, they're getting paid to, to do the, the building, whether they're bringing things to the buildings or actually working on the buildings. So there's a sense of needing them to be employed as well as uh, keeping, you know, we reward that, keeping them employed so they can afford to buy the foods that we are bringing into the town to stock their houses with. So to not employ them in the farm so that they're available to work the building sites can or you know can work or it could just doom them to, to not have enough income to continue throughout the rest of the year. So there's quite a, a balance we're going to have to learn with this game. A little different from uh, from what we're used to. One thing I do wish that the game would change in the long run is that they would be attracted to an existing path. Wouldn't it be nice to have one path that runs down here and dives off to each side, as if you put that road in yourself, rather than all of the spider web that's that's creating? So it'd be nice if they chose to take a path until there was a resistance point where they needed to go another direction so that the the roads seem to actually create roads that would be a neat uh, change or adaptation to what's actually going on um what else 
Actually, there's so many other comments over the last several episodes. This uh, this series has done pretty well for me. A lot of a lot of views and and a lot of new subscribers. I want to thank you guys for coming to the channel and hitting that subscribe button and all the likes. Really appreciate that. I had comments coming in from Kathra and, and Razor's Edge and Tony and David and Spartan Slayer and Liam and Peggy and Eva and, and quite a few others. There's, there's a long list of folks that have written in and, and give their advice or their compliments or what have you. Appreciate that. And one other little uh, series maintenance note here that there are several channels that uh, that I enjoy watching that are all picking up this game and creating series. So do check out Vapa's series, Vapa Gaming, as well as Murphy. Murphy Plays. Um, Razor's Edge has got one going. And a new channel, Pete Storm. I've been watching him on Twitch. And I suggested maybe he ought to put together a YouTube channel and draw folks in from YouTube to his Twitch channel and back and forth and, and kind of use both to promote each other. And he thought that was a great idea, and he's just started up his own YouTube channel. So I'll leave uh, links down below, or maybe I've already flashed them on the screen while editing. But uh, check him out. He, he chose as his first series for his YouTube channel, Ostrov. So that would be a, a fun one to, to watch and watch his channel grow and mature. Give him some, some tips and, and uh, help him out there. Anyway, am I done with my long page of notes? I think so. So what do we want to accomplish this time? I really want that done. But in Banished, they would not go out and work over here until you built them out toward there. Build some houses, build an area, build some more houses, build an area. They needed to work within a certain distance of where they needed to live within a certain distance where they, where they worked. And I wonder if somehow this is just breaking that distance barrier. I don't know. I wonder if we need to get a house. Well, we got a house right here, though. I mean, that's not that far away. It's got to be some way to pull this off. I can demolish fields. Now, one thing I did notice, and I think I made note of it last time. Well, I don't know. that I'm going to have an awful lot of deja vu moments. I'll, I'll tell you that because uh, I recorded episode 7 already, and I came up with a lot of ideas and, and ways to move forward. I don't know how many of them are in episode 6. This guy is quite a ways from all of these. And it would make sense to get another farm hub out here and kind of split this up, which means it would be nice to get a whole community out here. So how do we get these workers to build something out here? We could put houses right here, but we can't even get this built, let alone those houses there. If we had, if we got rid of a field, if I deleted that one and deleted these and built a little community in here, and then kind of stair step our way through, don't know. What I do want to do is a test though, is let's shut down every other project but this and let this run for a while and just see if we can force this cow shed to build so cow shed is running okay continue 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 you are the weavers workshop yeah we'll pause that as well and the tailors workshop so we won't get into that just yet uh, the well over there same thing not gonna be needed oh that was paused okay Hit that one. This guy is doing fine. So getting the other one going may not be as critical. And the bridge to nowhere. Let's pause him as well. So this is the only one that's active, right? No, nope. the well, pause. There we go. Act or Pause across all the top. Let's see if we can't now force this to happen. Now, we don't have potatoes yet. So there's no point in employing this. And for that matter, shut him down too. So that puts more people available to hopefully fill in these blanks. What else can we do? We desperately need fishing going. We don't need that going. Thatch, we have 20. We don't need that going right this moment. Now, I'm again, not employing people that I've, would be nice to be employed, but I need to figure out what it's going to take. We've got all kinds of wood right now. We're going to unemploy all these guys. And the carpentry, the carpentry. It might be wise to get plenty of carts in all the places where they start bringing supplies from. Let's get this in right here. Um, transport, transport, yeah. So this guy down in here, like so. 
In fact, it's the same roof, too. That's good. It looks like it's part of it. You're going to go there, and we're going to order two carts there as well. So, and another thing I came up with while I was watching uh, Vapa playing and, and kind of trying to work its way through here and see what this stuff is, and, and uh, I had really spent some time with this on episode seven i think maybe it was six maybe you guys already know what i'm where i'm heading but the in fact someone brought that up um oh jim did that came in it was episode six i'm thinking but it had to do with the granary over here no that was in seven yeah i'm going to be deja vuing big time through this episode in seven, I'm pretty sure I had completed the uh, uh, the, the granary. In fact, it was odd because it was clear back over here and it built first. So they ignored all of these and they were really happy to build the granary. But they would not build any of the other ones. And then they built the town hall. No, they got almost there when the episode ended. So they were excited about building right in this area. They're not excited about building clear out over here. So I still think a distance problem is going on. I mean, we've got all kinds of workers available, and they still will not come over here. Looking for laborers. we got gobs of laborers. There's nobody hired anywhere in the town. But anyway, back to what I was going to say over here. The ladies cannot use the carts. That's what it seems to be. If you look at the carts, it's not a four-wheel cart. It's not like a wagon. you got to lift the weight of this thing, plus all that's in there. So, and there's lifting of the item in and out. So I think the game is assuming that the, 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 the cart is a pretty heavy manual labor. It's like like lifting these logs up, putting it on their shoulders and carrying them in. It's, so the ladies are not cart pushers in this game. And what got me was that I had built the granary and employed two ladies in there and nothing got done. As soon as I employed a man in there, he went off and started hauling stuff in. I had set it to only worker by cart. If I had set it to worker by hand, then the ladies would have gone out and got the stuff. Which makes me wonder if they will go out and get the stuff if I have this checked. The guys are the carts and the ladies are the are by hand. Will we see a waiting fish? Now they're off to go and get their stuff. They were locked in and not able to do it before. That, I think, is what had been going on. Okay, so let's fire you and get a lady in here there we go who are you you are um, Milislava okay and a lady in there and a lady in there all right so a waiting fish a waiting fish and a not but I think you're not at your post yet is that you I think that was you but you have 1.3 fish you're doing pretty good fish we finally have somebody over here and they're fishing because in episode seven I had run into a food crisis and it's because I couldn't get anybody to fish and then I couldn't get anybody to take the fish that's what it was I couldn't get them to take the fish from here to here I had finally got them to fish and it's because the ladies cannot use the carts so there is a tip for you think about that who is employed there and that'll help you to figure out what to do here. I had employed a couple episodes ago everything so that laborers could bring all the stuff over. I was worried that that was going to distract them from all their other jobs. But it hasn't seemed to do any good. <laughs> all right, so where are we? We're right in here, which means wood and nails. We have a lot of wood and a lot of nails, and I still can't get anybody to do anything here. So I just don't know what to make of that. I don't know what's going on in the game, you know, in the background. Ah, this is what we missed last time. Didn't get to see that. So he he just took it out of there. He's bringing it over to here. Hey, we get to actually see this. And loading up looks like four of them. Yeah, now there were four on there, right? Though I'm seeing eight right here. And it raised up right there just by sheer willpower. This shows that there's four, but I'm seeing eight little blumps. And he just took four, and it's showing that there's three because she's adding it back in again. Oh, nice. So when the labor is available, it looks like they'll just continue maintaining these things. Well, that was interesting to watch. And she's making more and putting it where? 3.5. Oh, 
So each one is a half. Is that what I'm getting out of that? Yeah. So we're seeing eight, but they're halves. They're half a circle. They're half a sphere. That's how it's counting. It's not a it's not a ball of hay. It's it's half a ball. Okay, well we got to see that happen. Good. And these two should be more than enough to max these two out before we finally get cattle. So I think we've got a good enough uh, reservoir building up there. So if nothing is going to... Ha well, hello. All right. We'll wait. We'll give you guys a little more time to figure that out. Working and working. Working. Bring in clay. Yeah, you're heading off to clay and you're coming back with clay. And only one each. Although these clays are really big. I've criticized this before. It's frustrating they only bring in two clay. But if you look at it, the cart can only hold two clay. So I guess we're talking two huge quantities of clay. Where are you going? You are... cart is empty. <laughs> Do we have three workers over here? No, just the two. Who is the second one? That's you. So you were doing something else. So I'm going to go on slow speed for a while while I kind of iron out all these details and get us up and running again. You are path working on this one. Okay. But you dropped off. You're now on your way back to ah, you were using wood because we don't have a cart over here. Okay. So I do need to get one guy working. It takes two guys from what I can tell to bring the logs over. But one guy can bring the logs in that are stored here. And we do have 12 logs. We're maxed out. So if we leave one guy in here, he can just keep bringing one log in at a time and turning it into lumber. When we run out of logs, we're going to need two to go bring more logs in. Okay. And I did plant a whole bunch of trees in there. And I'm glad it was the episode that I didn't delete. So they are still here. Good. So let's kind of reevaluate things. That's good there. Though I thought about laborer by cart. So once in a while, if there's a big boost available, you know, they can bring a whole one instead of just a tenth of one of something. Flour or whatever. So maybe we should leave this on laborer by cart. Don't want to bother the laborers to bring it by hand one tenth at a time. But if they can bring a whole cartload and, and be done with it one time, maybe that is well worth it. Over here, though, we have set this back to just these guys. And it's by cart. That might be a problem. Let's go ahead and set both. Though it's all it's always going to be guys. And there is a cart right here. But I have a feeling this is going to become a very popular cart storage. These carts may not always be here. But if they can get a cart, walk... Actually, they got to go all the way back over here get a cart. And go over there to get it. And then go drop it off and go all the way back over here and go back. Is that faster because they're getting a whole one than going back and forth with tenths? I don't know. They're so, they're so close. We'll just have to kind of monitor that, I guess. Um, you are set to both. You could grab a cart. Actually, you're right there. You are right there. And you're the one that walked all the way over here to get that cart to go all the way back to move the wood to get all the way back over here and then you're just going back to work again. Yeah. Let's shut down the cart. You're so close. You can just grab a board and go back and forth. I think you can do that. I don't know. It takes 20 to build a cart though. A cart would do 10 at a time? I think. Well, I think I've seen 15 on a cart before. Huh. All right, we'll leave you with cart. Okay. What else do we need to micromanage here? You, by cart or by hand? You're by hand. You bring over one whole thistle or uh, reed by hand already. We've seen that. Oh, your boat. I'm thinking of this one. And there's, yeah, there's no choice there. You will need cart. Because you'd bring 20 at a time. Okay. But I'll go ahead and mark both. If there's no card available, at least you'll be doing something. Though we're not going to see that happen. Though I don't know how long we're not going to see that happen. Because Vapor brought up something in his episode today. That row boats, fishing boats, do wear out. There is a sense of damage accruing in these guys. 
So there, that must be the oldest boat. This one? No, that's the oldest boat right there. So a couple of years and we're going to have to build new boats. So kind of keep that in mind. There was in the roadmap for this game, way off in the future, a sense of vehicles are going to uh, wear out and need repair. But I didn't think that had been implemented, so I never bothered to look. Which means these carts here have not had them implemented yet. Okay. Oh, that's cart parking. Let me change my angle here. Okay. Can I get a hold of the cart? I cannot. Can I get a hold of this cart? I cannot. So the carts are not going to allow me to see something individually, right? No. Oh, I can only get the parking. Okay. So the cart must be part of the person at this point. Don't really get the sense of an individual object in the game yet. Okay. Well, with all of that, we brought over more wood, more clay. We're bringing over thatch. We may actually see this one done. Something is working again. Good. I'm not going to unpause anything till this happens, but what should we unpause when it does happen? I would say all three houses. Can we feed all three? We're going to have potatoes coming in, so we can do that. Now, episode seven, I set all these to potatoes. All right, so glad I checked that. I don't know that I truly need three markets all doing the same thing, except that it does increase the possibility that somebody went over and got potatoes. Because when I had first started, I had just one, and it sat there at 0.9 fish, and it would not say that I had enough food available for people to come. So when I, well, I think it was my test game, when I popped in three and they all collected their 0.9s, then the game said there was enough. So it had finally accrued some kind of a total that was acceptable to the game. So one stalled out and didn't get to that point. That's why I put in three, so that between the three of them, they will, as a total, finally accomplish the goal. All right, so lots and lots of talking, and wow, is a half hour gone by already? Almost. I want to see this happen, so let's kick the speed up to number two and hop in here a little bit and watch. We've got labor, so we just dropped off the thatch down in the, in the crawl space there where it can't be seen. <laughs> we got a worker who just got the cue. It's time to go to work. Great. Wood is holding somebody. In fact, he's right there. He's just going to went in. He's going to pop back out and grab a log. He's going to go back in and, da, 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 and he's going to turn that into 15 wood. He does it over there. Let's watch that again. He does it over there. Okay, I didn't know that. So the firewood must be done in here. Because there was something that they were doing. What did she do? She went and got firewood. Oh, slow down. Uh, one. Is she bringing firewood to her house? Uh, path. She is. Cool. So, okay. I I have seen a cart pull up to a house before and leave. In fact, it was in the uh, the little intro that I created for this series, the little sped up version of building a house. If you look really close there, you see the lady run in, a cart pull in, and then the guy pull in, and then it goes to snow. Though I really sped that up, time-lapsed it. But that was when I noticed that they actually bring supplies to their own home. You are... Okay, I can't click her when she's inside. Can I clip into the, a house? You can't do that, right? No, you can't. You can't get down low enough to do that. I see. It keeps you above building level. Maybe that's to keep you from clipping in. That could be why we can't get to ground level. Maybe that's uh, his way of making sure that we don't clip into a building by keeping us above the uh, the buildings at all times. That would be an interesting tactic to solve that problem, wouldn't it? All right, we have some progress. Woohoo! Got a builder. There's one thatch, so I'm guessing the rest of the thatch is arriving. I think it needed seven. Where are we? This is the cow shed. Needs five thatch. Oh, one and four. So what are you bringing? Or are you just finishing? Uh, you're... F Do that again. I had that on my screen. You are 
just dropping off the cart after having delivered that batch. Okay, so all the materials are here. And we are putting up the rest of the boards to be able to support the thatch. In fact, let's swing around to this side. There we go. So framing out the, uh, the roof timbers there. Neat. So now I can kick the speed back up. A little more confident that we're going to start accomplishing things again. Um, never mind. <laughs> you're going home, aren't you? Yeah, you're you're ready for a break. All right. So with that, I want to open up another one, but I really want to just make sure that that gets done. Then we'll open up the other one. So we'll probably get done things we have queued. And although I'm questioning this now, you know, I'm going to take it back to speed one. What if we cancel all this, if we can, and instead start that community over here? That's going to take us long enough to probably get to a point where enough updates have happened that we do want to start over again to see all the new stuff. So, can we? Now, I'm pretty sure it was Vapa in his his uh, episode that uh, he, he noticed that when he shut down or paused something, they started going and cannibalizing the materials that had been brought to those to that site. Uh, for him, I want to say it was the fishery. And there was thatch delivered there. And he, uh, uh, he, he didn't have the thatchery going at that time. He was getting a little worried. So he paused the fishery and they started stealing thatch that had been delivered there to do some of the houses. So if I shut these things down, we haven't lost these materials. So demolish? It will. Okay, they've got to physically come over and do this, though. So let's um, unpause and unpause. This one, demolish. It's gone. Okay, the well, demolish, cannot. So the well, demolish, does not work, and the boathouse, demolish, does not work. The market stall, you are employed. No. You're you're delivering. Well, let's need to empty first. Okay. Um let's not do that now. And let's hmm. Well, I'm not sure how to stop that person from making that delivery. But maybe that you already gave up on it. I think you're going back home. You know, you're going to start it. That's interesting. You're going from this cart house to this cart house. Huh. Anyway, we'll have to see how that happens. But I think, yeah, let's abandon this area. So that is you demolish. You demolish. Okay. Maybe we want to restart the game while the flags will go away. They seem to be... There's the sense of an undo. So there's a timer that's going on here. Okay. So we'll pull all those out of the queue. And let's think about building a community out in this area. Including, though I'm hesitant to queue them up. I wish I could queue them up and be confident that I can pause them and just use it as a placeholder. We do have a worker still working over here, heading over here. Okay. In fact, where are you at right now? You are in it. Okay. We'll pop down into here while he's thinking about building. And so I want to drop a farm in here and maybe lay out some more fields, though not activate them so that we've got a sense of where they're going to be so we know where to build another small community. So that's probably what needs to be done. Um, let's kick the speed up a bit and watch him do his thing here. I like watching this process too. So he's putting up the, looks like the end gables over there. And you are doing something. Oh, I see. He was putting up more of the, of the the boards going across. Can't think what the name of these boards are. Got your, your rafters in here, your joists there. What is the name of the boards that cross the rafters on a uh, on a timber frame? Hmm. Oh, there it goes. I think we're going to see a... <laughs> Every time I make that guess. Taking a rest. Okay, you're still employed here. You're just on your break. Oh, that's right. Vapor brought that up too. 
what if we were to give them a place to take a rest right nearby? Would they not make the long trek to go and do that? That is worth trying all over the... the we must be into August. Okay, so we've got the uh, the harvest going on. Um, yeah, they they seem to hit, want to head to a bench. Or maybe their house to take a rest. If there was a bench available, would they have taken a rest right then and there? Um, slow it back down. I'm going to make this episode longer than usual. I'm going to get a little bit accomplished here. Where else can we have them take a rest? All right, you guys have got the ability to get carts over here now. Um, call these rest benches. Where to? The fishermen. There would be a great place to, to take a rest. And right in there. Spin you around. Actually, I want to aim you... Well, that's kind of odd. It'll be facing the building. Let's aim you right in there. That seems to be a road that's going to stay. So we'll pop you in there. And where else? And don't even forget, I want to also tell you about something that I discovered on Pete Storm's episode. He had not played the game very much, and in fact, just played it for the very first time on his uh, Twitch stream, and yet he popped in with an idea that I had never seen before, completely original for, for me. Where do, where do I want to put this? And I can't discuss that and think, because I'm not a multitasker. Where do we want to take a rest that would be beneficial? It probably I'm thinking of the businesses. So often here would be good. Um, all right, let's do one in there. Kind of in between these two businesses. Right in there. And over here. This would be another important place. Right there. Like that. And T a little right in there. And the trading post. We already have one out here. Let's do one by the trading post. And let's do it on this side of the trading post, so these guys can use it too. And we'll see if this truly is a thing. If people are taking their rest, but they're... Maybe, I don't know if their rest is a very specific amount of time, or if it doesn't start the timer until they sit down and then they rest. So if we can get them on that bench early, maybe they will... Oh, we have two workers coming oh, in. Then maybe that timer will elapse quicker. Okay, let's speed this up, and then I'll tell you what I was going to tell you. All right, how much are you going to get done before you got to go take a rest? This is looking promising. Thatch is going in. That's the almost the last of the stored thatch, and you're going to do the last one? No. <laughs> you gave up just you got there. We have a cow shed. Woohoo! Alright, turn the speed back down. We'll get into that in a minute. What Pete had done, and it, it surprised me, I didn't know it could be done, is he had taken actually an existing tree and protected it. And then he set a house over that protected spot. And when it built, the protected tree stayed within the building site. So he could pick and choose what he wanted to be within the yard as orig as uh, mature trees, and they remained. I didn't know that could be done because I'm so used to seeing this orange warning, cannot put here, cannot put here, because something is in the way. So I would think if you protected a tree and it stayed in the way, that it would doom you to not be able to build it. So that's interesting. You could skillfully and it will take some practice plant a variety of trees if you want a perimeter of trees around the house plant a whole bunch of them then lay the house in or protect all of them then lay the house in and they should remain i haven't tested this maybe it was just a fluke in the game of what he did and and i did land right on the edge of the fence so it was iffy but i think he was onto something anyway cow shed we'll finish the episode with this no livestock, uh-huh, but we have a cow shed now. And we have a carpentry, which means we could order a plow for next year. Um, limit of livestock. Resource supply. Add pasture. Okay, so add a pasture. 
so we can build a pasture let me zoom out here a little bit we could you know click click and take it out and call it a pasture click that pasture and we could assign to the cow shed can we assign this farm can't during the season because it's activated deactivate assign can't during the season okay can i assign can't click on a farm or cow shed to assign so i can click it i can reassign it to this guy or to this guy so any of these fields um when they're laying fallow i'm meaning off season maybe i wonder um, if I were to go over here where we have a manager employed, can I take field one, deactivate it, and somehow reassign it from here? I cannot. So assign to other. Can't reassign during season. Okay, so this one I want to demolish. I just threw that in for fun. But I would think that we would want a cow field specific to this right here with other supporting buildings right in there so long term i think that's what would look and act the you know work the best so if we were to grab now is there okay let's i wanted to grab that fence post well, let's grab this fence post over here so they do have a, a way to travel around it and we'll take it out about like so that should put the door on this wall the very first wall you build is the door be nice you know it does snap at at the straight across level. I wish it would snap at the 90. So I'm going to make a guess that that looks pretty good there. But we can see it doesn't. It's off just a tiny bit. So let's take you to there. Still off a little. Take you to there. That's too much. So there's some guesswork in here. And I'll take you to like that. So we're kind of even with this one. There. It kind of works. There's a gap up there. Um, Alt doesn't do any good here. Shift or Control, nothing really helps that. Let's see if I can get one more try. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Can I right click and put you right there? Okay. Was that enough? That looks pretty good. Okay. That's enough to hold 20. Well, I don't know. 20 bushels or servings of crop I don't know what that does for cattle but you are assigned to the cow shed at this point okay and I've if I remember correctly you could reassign some of these fields to the cow shed and put cattle in them activate them and the cattle will help to rejuvenate a fallow field and put nutrients back into it so that's something there too anyway I don't know what the worker accomplishes here. Um, when you buy cattle from neighbor towns, it will be assigned to a cow shed with more space, or that has enough space. Make sure the cow shed is staffed and has stock of hay and water before cattle trader arrives. Oh, okay. So let's make the guess that a worker there will go out and get water and will go out and get. Uh, uh, hay and stock it. Okay. In the summer, cows can graze in a pasture. Use add pasture button to add one. Uh, they can also pasture in a fallow farm field if you allow it to do so. Uh, for breeding, you need at least one bull per cow shed. Ah, I wondered the difference between oxen and bull when uh, you choose what to what to buy. Okay, one bull per cow shed. Uh, you can also turn bulls into oxen for use as draft animals. We won't discuss that process. All the livestock is listed in cow shed properties panel. Okay, when we get some. You can relocate particular animals between cow sheds by dragging them from the list and dropping them on the targeted cow shed. Okay, that's nice to know. So if we were to breed and a bull, a male came out, then we could put him into the next cow shed without having to buy one. That's my guess. You can build a slaughterhouse to produce beef and hide. Slaughterhouse workers will take cattle starting from oldest when livestock limit is reached. Okay. So, and you can set your livestock limit right here. All right. And that's very similar to banished. Um, let's see. Reach if you choose to slaughter a particular animal. Okay. Uh, if you choose to slaughter a particular animal, oxen and last bull will never be slaughtered automatically. 
or if you wish to. Okay, if winter, in winter, each animal consumes 0.25 hay. All right, and we saw that we're making four hay per each of these per month. So basically one hay per animal per winter. There's a rule of thumb for you. Build hay dryers for hay provision and hay barracks for storage. All right, well, I am happy with the way this episode went versus the last two or three where there were so many questions being answered or being asked and eventually answered in the comments. So I think I will resist pre-recording more than maybe one extra at a time. If a breaking update does hit, then I guess we just, you know, well, actually, in that case, I just won't update for a, a couple of episodes until we get to what feels like a good conclusion. Then we'll start over again. So that's, that's something to do. I do have control of when it updates. It's not on Steam. On Steam, it's very frustrating. Your choices are something like update when you start the game or update automatically or always keep it updated. There's never, there isn't a choice of never update my game. So you've got to just, you know, yank the, uh, uh, the modem cord out of the computer if you don't want it to update. So that's why I've got my RimWorld as a separate game. I still have the original RimWorld um, that isn't on Steam. So when we get to RimWorld 18, Alpha 18, I won't be using the Steam version or mods. That way I can play the game even beyond Alpha 18 when all the mods will be updating for 19 and breaking everybody's game. I'll still be able to continue our little colony. Hopefully that starts soon. I'm still waiting to find out when 18 is coming out. Tynan had teased us a month or two back saying that 18 was in internal testing. So I was going to get 17 going and I decided to hold off. But anyway, different game, different topic. Time to end this episode. I thank you guys for watching. This has been Noble Rambler, and leave me lots of comments with what I have come up with today, and let me know if I'm on the right track. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.